Yo, what is up guys? This is Troy D from the Troy D 24 seven mall channel, your source for on point and no hype reviews. Welcome back yet again, everybody. It's been a week. I've had a long ass week at work and it's been crazy busy. Now that I do have another set of days off, it's time for me to work on my YouTube channel yet again and to give you guys the best no hype perfume reviews on the planet. Now before I continue, please do not forget to like and subscribe guys, okay? We are growing every single day. We hit 10K before the start of this year and I really wanna hit 20K at the end of this year. So please do help out by liking, subscribing, sharing the videos, telling your friends about it. Because again, this is where you're gonna get the no hype stuff. This is the channel where you can get really objective reviews about fragrances, real complete breakdowns. And the fact that I'm buying samples of it, I'm using samples of it, to be honest, that's one of those keys to victory right here. That's one of the keys as to why I'm so unbiased because I'm not really committed. I don't spend 500, 600, $700 of my money. And then at the same time, when I get it, I'm biased towards it because I spent money towards it. Now, because I am only getting good samples of these fragrances, I can give you guys an objective look on these fragrances without being too committed and to where I'm already biased about the fragrance. Now the fragrance I will be reviewing today, pretty interesting, pretty mysterious, and pretty expensive. It's Nisha Shem, guys, all right? Nisha Shem. I got this sample a week or two weeks ago and I have been wearing this over and over to give you guys a really good review. And this fragrance right here, just from the bottle, as you can see, this one is on sort of like the higher bracket more expensive tier of the Nishane perfumes. It's up there with Neffs, and as you can see, it's a similar bottle. It's a gold bottle with green accents. And so this one already, if you're a grail collector, if you're the type of perfume collector that only wants the higher tier, more expensive stuff, this will probably grab your attention. And if you are just the general Nishane fan, if you like the Nishane fragrances straight out of Turkey, then you might be interested too. Now, there's a lot to say about Nishane Shem, but before I continue, let's go spray this thing right now. Mm. All right, here we go, Nishane Shem. Man, I got so pumped up when I sprayed this perfume. Now there's a lot of different mixed feedback about Nishane Shem. One being that it's a rose leather fragrance and some people are saying that it's sort of like a redundant type fragrance. Let me start off by saying that Nisha Shem is really relevant right now. It's relevant for the cold weather. I think that when the summer comes or spring summer comes and everybody will be wearing Renaissance and whatever aquatic fragrances right there, I think that this fragrance won't matter much, but right now, as of right now, cold weather. And here, to me, it's kind of cold. It's like 40 degrees. I'll be headed to New York next week and it's like 12 degrees over there. I will bring this sample, okay? Because I think that it's highly relevant to the cold weather right now. If you are looking for a really good cold weather perfume, I will start off by saying Nishane Shem is right there with it. So let's get into the notes, guys. When it comes to Nishane Shem, First part is pretty interesting right here. You have rose, geranium, and cardamom. The cardamom is sort of like the curve. It curves this fragrance immediately and it's a precursor to what this fragrance is really about, which I'll talk about in a bit. And then you have a first part of rose and geranium. Now for me, I really would not classify this as a rose fragrance. In the beginning, guys, you are going to get maybe a whiff or two of some sort of a fruity aromatic rose. And I think that that's because of the geranium, okay? So there will be like a tinge of fruity rose in the beginning, bed of cardamom to curve this fragrance. And then this fragrance does transition into a dark rose. This fruity type of geranium that you're gonna get right here, I don't think lasts a long time probably two to three minutes of that fruity type rose just on the opening, but then eventually it becomes dark rose and cardamom. Now for me, the reason why this fragrance isn't really a rose fragrance is because I think it's a Cipriol based fragrance, okay? Because the main star, the chief star of this entire fragrance is gonna be Cipriol oil. And the Cipriol oil starts 
early guys all right it starts early and as you guys know cypriol oil can be overwhelming can be strong i'm pretty surprised that people are calling this like a rose fragrance just because it has rose because the geranium fruity aspect of it doesn't last even like five minutes and the dark rose doesn't even last 15 minutes it actually gets wiped off the board by this uh, really really strong but well blended cypriol oil now i don't know if you guys follow every single video i have but for the past like how many videos how many of those fragrances have cypriol oil almost all of them like i really feel tired repeating this already but the thing about cypriol oil like i said is that it's the perfect warming like winter weather type of note. It's very warming, it's an immediate curve. There's something classy about it. There's something mysterious about it because it's not oud, okay? And it's not really repulsive, whereas oud sometimes can be repulsive. This fragrance right here, uh, with the cypriol oil being the front and center, to be honest, I think that it makes you feel like you are wearing an alpaca jacket, an alpaca sweater, an alpaca blanket real furry fuzzy and warming guys and at the same time when cypriol oil is done where it's not like an overload and it's blended with something else i think that it's going to be perfect execution right here now case in point when it comes to cypriol oil one of those big hits right now in the fragrance world is uniki's kute right and so kute has another cypriol oil based mid with some whiskey so the cypriol oil binds with the whiskey and it creates a nice sensation a warming sensation for the cold weather but then it's got whiskey in this case guys again perfect execution you've got a cypriol oil mid but then at the same time it has amber right and then it has osmanthus the floral osmanthus at the top really giving you almost like another different fragrance right here which is really awesome and this comprises of most of the fragrance i'm talking about hours and hours of cypriol oil binded with amber real warming and then pulled into balance by the amber and then osmanthus flower which is wonderful i mean it matches it perfectly you have warming cypriol and amber some sweet amber to balance it out and then a floral of osmanthus right there so it's really great now i will say this guys sensation wise this will last a long time this part will last a long time hours and hours probably six or seven hours of this and then what will happen here is that you will get a bridge note all right a bridge note to the dry down and that is care of leather okay so leather is the bridge note from here all the way to the dry down and the best way i can describe this leather is it comes in really smooth whiffs which is really awesome now i hate leather fragrances that are too heavy like ombre leather parfum like i don't even really want to review it because i would say a lot of bad stuff about it i don't want heavy leather and i think that that's one of the fears of many fragrance heads that want to get into leather and they're just like well i'm scared of just smelling like leather all throughout and kind of pushing people away with that kind of scent in this case guys the leather is smooth comes in whiffs doesn't even really overcome anything that's going on and it bridges from that dark warming cypriol mid so i guess you can say that this fragrance is really like a dark fragrance and it's quite appropriate when it comes to the cold weather and or formal occasions nighttime formal occasions and that leather just helps it go through okay with that bridge note of leather it is also an ultra masculine scent it's an ultra masculine scent like i really like it i think it goes with the same vein as Kute and maybe even Nefs. I think that women can definitely enjoy this because it's got enough like uptick type of notes such as your Rose and your Osmanthus and then later I'm going to talk about the LME Resin but right now I think it's ultra masculine. I think that if you're looking for an ultra masculine perfume that has some appeal to it i think that this falls into that bracket as well so again leather smooth leather coming in here and then what binds into the leather guys is lme resin and lme resin is an interesting note i'm really glad they put this note here in the end because what it does is it provides sort of like a very fresh spicy part to this end i feel like it's like a release because 
from the beginning up to the mid, and I'm talking about hours and hours of the mid, you have this insane curve. It's like it's curved, it's warming, it's dark uh, with this fragrance here, Nishan Shem. And then I feel like the dry down is like a release from that dark, kind of like real curved uh, type of mid. And you're gonna have that Elemi resin that rises up and gets you that fresh spicy feeling. And then of course the other significant note right here, especially in the dry down, is going to be your vetiver. You're gonna get this green, earthy, nice vetiver here. And this basically continues from the Cypril oil. So you're gonna have that green Cypril oil going to this nice green earthy vetiver here in the dry down. Again, with the LME resin rising up, giving you a nice whiff, a nice release from that immediate curve. But then also you have the leather coming in and out. I really like it because of these amazing blends. I feel like I got two fragrances in one. And that's also because of that really, really insane performance from Nisha Neshem. This fragrance lasts a long, long, long time. In my opinion, the mid went on and on up to like the 10 hour mark. And then the dry down was like headed towards the 16 hour mark. And I think it became a skin scent at the 20 hour mark. Like it's insanely long lasting which leads me to believe that this fragrance is great for all day affairs. If you want a fragrance to stay consistent with a classy, dark, mysterious, and ultra masculine image, I think that this will do it for you all day, all right? Especially the mid to the dry down, but then of course, I mean, you got that dark rose opening as well. I think this fragrance is worth it. This is not a cheap fragrance. It's $500 for 50 ml. But do take note that there are a few fragrances that are really all day affair fragrances that will really last maybe 20 hours that will really give a consistent image for you. I really wouldn't mind buying a full bottle of this fragrance and like rocking it like all winter, you know, especially if you live in the East Coast right now or maybe Canada or wherever it is that there's snow, Switzerland. I think that this is a relevant fragrance and if you have the money to do it, why not? Because it will really keep you warm, classy, mysterious, like all throughout. And again, the Cypriol oil, man. I mean, really well blended Cypriol oil. I really believe that Cypriol oil is the new oud, all right? Like you heard it here first. I really think it's the new oud. Like remember those days where like oud was like such a buzzword and almost every other fragrance wanted to get into oud? Well, I think now the fragrance makers are getting into Cypriol oil or that's what they're using a lot because it's becoming more famous now. It's really not as exotic as oud, but for the winter time, again, it's absolutely perfect. Now here's a little disclaimer right here. If you are the type of collector that is on the sphere of, I don't know, mass appealing type fragrances, I think you should try this first because this might be too exotic for you. But I think that once you smell this, just like Kute, I think, I think a lot of people are gonna fall in love with it. I think a lot of people are going to like this. It's not cheap, but then again, if you look at the performance of the way that a couple sprays, two, three sprays will last 20 hours, I think even with 50 ml, I think is gonna be worth it compared to like 100 ml of something that really doesn't have the potency to last that long with a significant scent. All right, so that is my review of Nisha Neshem. Hopefully this review has given you guys some clarity on what this fragrance is. I know some of you have already started commenting and y'all have said that this is a banger. I really truly believe so, especially in the cold weather. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. Have you purchased this or have you purchased a sample and what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. I mean, there's no right or wrong answers. This is just my interpretation of this fragrance right here. And again, please do not forget to like and subscribe to the channel, guys, okay? So I appreciate your help. Appreciate subscribing, liking, watching the ads. A good part of this revenue right here just goes back into fragrances anyways. I mean, I really tirelessly find a lot of these samples or bottles of fragrances that you want to hear about and I try to do it as quick as I can, like sample them, wear them, and give you guys the reviews. And so I really thank you guys for supporting the channel. I mean, ever since we started, thank you so much. And until then, I'll see you on the next video. God bless. Peace.